Hey everybody, I'm Richard Krause and welcome to It's 5 O'Clock Somewhere. Today I'm going to teach you how to make one of the triple crown of cocktails. Right up there with the Manhattan, the Martini, I would place the Negroni in a third but not distant third spot. This is a delicious drink that is the very definition of my ethos of making cocktails, which is KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. You don't need a bunch of stuff to make a delicious Negroni, but you have to be careful with them because like Negroni fan Anthony Bourdain, the late great Anthony Bourdain once said that they will hit you like a freight train if you've had more than two or three of them. So be careful with them. Their very simplicity is the thing that makes them a little bit dangerous because really, no matter how many you've had, you can always go back and make one more. The Negroni is an aperitif. Now, what's an aperitif? That's a fancy word to be thrown around on a show about booze. Well, it's not all that fancy. All it means is that it's a drink that you have before dinner just to kind of get everything going. Going. So that means they are not overly sweet. You'll rarely ever find an aperitif that tastes like dessert. Uh, these drinks are usually bitter. They've got just enough to get the saliva in your mouth going. And the Negroni certainly is that. It is booze upon booze upon booze. As I said earlier, be careful with them. Uh, but there's a nice bitter flavor that comes through that will make you hungry for dinner, but also probably hungry for more than one Negroni. I always liked what or Orson Welles had to say about Negronis. He tried them in the 40s and loved them. And he said, the bitters is good for your digestion. The gin is bad for your heart. So they balance one another out. And see, that's two. That's just two of the ingredients that are in there. There's only three. You can't mess this one up. Here's what you need to make the perfect Negroni. You'll need your choice of gin, some red vermouth, and most importantly, the Campari. <laughs> Oh, and you'll need a knife. So the list of ingredients couldn't be any simpler. And I know it might be easier to go out and buy these things, these cute little pre-mixed uh, Dylan's Negronis, and they are delicious. They're really, really good. Uh, but when there's only three ingredients in a drink, why not make it at home and you can fine tune it using the ingredients that you want to use. Now, you'll see that I held up uh, this fancy gin, mermaid gin. There's all sorts of gins over here and you're not gonna hear me talking about botanical forward gins or things that have more juniper per than the other. I, I don't know. I can't. I'm not refined enough, I guess, uh, to, to sense all that stuff. But we've got all kinds of gins here, including this one, which I'll show you just because it's cool. The Monkey 47 Small Bottle Potent Gin. We're not using that one today. We're going to use uh, the Mermaid Gin. And frankly, we're using that one because it's the nicest looking bottle on the bar cart and I wanted to showcase it. So, Mermaid Gin. Uh, we're using Cinzano Vermouth. I know that vermouth is kind of like a thing now. It's gone through this renaissance and uh, people are making artisanal uh, vermouths and that kind of thing. I'm not using those because in the lockdown, what I have found is that they don't last very long. So I don't drink a lot of vermouth. Uh, so if I buy a bottle and it only lasts for a couple of weeks, it just ends up sitting in my fridge and then I end up throwing it away. So I went for an old standby, the Cinzano vermouth. And then to me, the thing that makes a Negroni a Negroni, the Campari. Uh, this is the ingredient that for me has to stay consistent. Otherwise they just don't taste the same. Then of course, the orange and this just lends a nice citrus note to all this. The drink was invented about a hundred years ago and it was uh, kind of a funny story but it, it is actually named after a guy called Count Negroni who was an aristocrat but who had this kind of wild life and he lived all over the world including in literally the Wild West in America where he was a rodeo clown. Then when he went back to uh, Italy and he brought with him this taste for like hard liquor and, and, and lots of booze. He went to a bar and he ordered uh, a drink called an Americano, which was uh, half a Negroni or two thirds a Negroni. It's Campari and vermouth. And he said, you know what? Instead of putting soda water in that, fill it up with gin. 
and uh, we'll see how that tastes. And it created the classic cocktail uh, up there, the top three in my books, uh, that we're still drinking 100 years later. And of course, they named it after him. Now, before we actually pour the booze, there's one more really important part of this. What glass are we going to serve it in? We could put it in something like this. Oh, wait, this one's really cool. Hey, how about this glass? Actually, none of those are right. What you want is a classy glass. You want a glass that says, I used to be an aristocrat, but now I'm a rodeo clown. So what I found is that something like this is just about perfect for this. So this will be our Negroni glass. Okay, to now actually make the drink. First of all, you just throw a cube of ice. I don't like a lot of ice, just one big one right in the center of the glass. And here's the beautiful part about making a Negroni. You don't have to be a math genius. There's no half ounce here, quarter ounce here. It's three equal parts. So if you're like me, you use a shot glass. If you don't have a shot glass, you can use uh, an egg cup. If you want to make a lot of these, use a, a coffee mug. Doesn't matter what you use as long as it's a third, a third, and a third. So let's start with the gin. Uh, I'm using the beautiful mermaid gin. And I'm going to throw an ounce of that in here. An ounce of red vermouth. Oh, it's starting to look delicious already. And an ounce of Campari. You do that now, instead of a bar spoon, because I don't happen to have one right here, just give that a little twirl. Make sure that it's nice and chilled all the way through. And then there's another really important part of making a Negroni, and that's the orange peel. So take a knife and you want to just get the outside of the rind. You don't want too much more than that. The inside part is kind of bitter and it won't make a huge difference to the drink, uh, but you don't want it in there uh, just in case. Now there's another really cool thing. If you're having people over, you're probably not gonna do this so much if you're just sitting around at home drinking these alone. But if you're having people over, um, grab a pack of matches from your favorite bar, light it, Hold it in front of your drink and then squeeze the rind and what you'll see is that sparks will shoot out and what you're doing is throwing the essence of that orange right into the drink. Give it another stir and say cheers because it's got to be five o'clock somewhere. It's delicious. Talk to you next time. <laughs>